Hello, I'm Vince Pizzat. Today we're going to rebuild a Thompson valve 2. Go over some catches and maybe some things that'll help you in the field. Tools you are going to need. An adjustable wrench, 3 quarter inch wrench, 9 16 wrench, Teflon tape, and a Thompson valve 2 rebuild kit. Inside the kit, they supply you with anti-seize, a schematic, parts breakdown, and all the spare parts you will need in a complete tungsten carbide rebo kit. I'm going to use an impact with a 916 drill driver to cut down on speed. Once you pull the top cap off the pumpkin, you're going to see the blue knob, the vibration disc, and what the vibration disc does is it keeps the knob stiff when you turn it so that you don't run into issues where when you're transporting the valve or um, a lot of vibrations on the pot is adjusting your metering valve while you're blasting. You never want to have that. So that's the purpose of the disc. You'll see the main gasket for the top of the pumpkin and the top cap, your blue spring, and inside you will see the top of the piston, piston cap. Then we're going to move on to the bottom of the valve and pull off the base. Once you remove the base, you inspect for any wear that may be going on around the hole. And then you turn the valve upside down, use your wrench, and pull out the urethane seat. The seat is a common replacement item um, in the field. You'll notice if a valve starts having blow by or um, a lot of chugging when they first start up the, the blast hose, but then it goes to normal after that. And what happens is you actually get a rut dug in the seat and the piston cannot seal properly, so it allows a very small amount of abrasive through the valve. So you want to inspect and make sure it's the same all the way around. There's no ruts dug in the seat. Uh, these are cheap, and this will fix a lot of issues if you keep up on simple replacement seats. Then you're going to split the pumpkin from the body. And let's, uh, let's go to the pumpkin first. You're going to have three seals or wipers the purple seals. The first two will face the bottom of the valve, like this. You can see it. And the bottom one will face towards the pumpkin. So the purpose of this sweeper is to get any dust that may get on the bottom side of this piston. Let me take them out so I can show you. So the first wiper on the piston like this. And the purpose of this is to make sure no contaminants come through the bottom wall and get onto the piston and lock it up. So you should have three. And the purpose of the second two, which face the opposite direction, sweep the piston clean from any contaminants coming out of the body where the valve actually meters abrasive. You will have your piston in the top to your piston. And right here we have a completely covered in NIC's main gasket. Uh, this is an important one. We'll see a lot of times customers will send their valves in to be rebuilt and they will have the opening of this gasket facing up instead of the correct way, like you can see here, facing down. Um, if you need to replace the main top part to the piston, which is not very common, but you do have to replace the piston. You're going to want to take your 
adjustable wrench. And a 7 8 cents wrench. And bust loose. Sorry. The main nut from the piston. Replace your piston as needed. And put the new piston around the top plate. And we will go ahead and do that. We'll take our new piston. Put it on, use the old existing nut. Some guys lock tight. It's not really needed. Just make sure you get it nice and snug. Then torque the valve. Come to me. We will take the old black big O-ring, inspect and set to the side. It may be able to be used in a different valve or may not need replaced quite yet. Um, we would suggest replacing all the seals when going through the valves, but uh, sometimes you are able to get by. We will take the new gasket, the supplied anti-seize, and before we install the new gasket, we'll take it up from the bottom side, open side facing down, and just walk it on. Once we get the gasket in place, then we will lubricate the gasket. That way we don't have to get our hands completely covered in the anisees. Anybody who's worked with the anisees will completely understand the concept. So I like to put just a few dabs, and then use the tube itself to walk all the way around so you get a good consistent coat. Then you are ready to put your piston back into the bowl. So you're gonna to wanna to inspect the inside of the bowl, make sure there's no debris, um, we're rebuilding a new valve, so I know it's in good shape. Um, if there's a lot of leftover anti-seize or dust that's built up in here, you're going to want to clean that out as well. Um, brake cleaner in a rag works great, or a different kind of solvent. So you want to inspect for any crazy scoring on the inside that would hurt a gasket. If not, then you're good to go. Simply push it back into place. We can set that aside. Actually, let's go ahead and rebuild that and follow through with it. So blue spring, you want to inspect the spring, make sure it's not rattly or in really bad shape, rusting or anything like that. Top cap. Uh, the top cap will bolt on and seal uh, 90 degrees out. You want it to be like this. You notice you have a straight edge here and on this edge, it's, it's got ridges. You want to make sure you match the ridges. Uh, some guys will find when they put an older valve style together with a newer valve style or replacement parts come a little bit different and that's fine they will work together you want to start all of these threads on all the bolts i'm going to use the impact for time's sake but not the final tiny I'm just going to bring it down And then I'm going to finish tightening and torquing with a wrench so I can actually feel what's going on. Um, you have a aluminum body and a steel bolt. You should never use an impact. It will strip the threads right out of the body. So once you get those all down, I know the top side's good. We'll set that up here out of the way. Our wrench is out of the way. And we will move to the lower body finish disassembling this. What you're going to see here is the sleeve and the infamous little black gasket or o-ring. This o-ring is the one spot uh, somebody who's not really familiar with a valve will typically uh, have an issue. So let's go ahead and strip it. You may find when you take the body out of your valve you have to beat it out with um, uh, a socket or a socket and a hammer or something else that fits the orifice size. Um, you can always use your old piston as a socket so it works pretty well but it is tungsten carbide so it is brittle so be careful when you're hitting it. We're going to take the new replacement gasket, put it on the sleeve and put it right back into the body. You'll notice that there's a set pin inside the body right here and on your 
sleeve itself, there is a groove right, let's see if I get the light, right there. So those two need to align. Before you just slide that right in there and it's gonna wanna go easy, you need to turn the valve over, look through the hole here. It's kinda hard to see. Um, look through the hole and put your finger on that black O-ring and put pressure on it before you slide it down. Otherwise you will cookie cutter that black O-ring inside the valve and you will have compromise the ability to see a lot of braces before you even started. Uh, that's a pretty common issue. So you want to make sure you pay really close attention to that. And then we're going to move on and complete the bottom of this. We have the old seat. Let's put the new one in. Um, there's a beveled side and a flat side. Um, beveled always goes towards the piston. So if the valve is sitting like this, when it's positioned like this, you want the beveled side to go up just push that into place. Okay. From there, we're going to take our valve top side and put our new seats in place. You're going to want to lube these up with very minimal amounts of anti-seize. Uh, remember, you are working with abrasive sand or a grit or anything like that. So any kind of moisture is going to make it stick and it's not going to flow very well. So first one, goes towards the pumpkin and walk it on and push it down and I typically take a wrench and just walk it in so I know that it goes in the right way before I tighten everything together and you can see it walking down just fine make sure, sure that that one's in place the second two again a very minimal amount of anises this one's going to face up the opposite direction as well as the next one Then we are ready to put on the body. So from here, we are going to, again, inspect the body for any wear that we may have missed before, and then position like so onto the pumpkin. And it's going to stop on those seats. When it stops on those seats, um, I typically just do it all the same way and I just give it a good hit with your hand and it puts it right into place or a mallet would work. Then you're going to be ready for your base. You're going to, again, start all four of the bolts by hand so you do not cross thread them. Then we're going to bring them down with an impact. But we're not going to crush it with the impact. We're going to use a wrench again because we will Blow the gaskets right out, and you'll see the gaps here closing in the body, the base, and the top pumpkin when tightening everything down. You always want to tighten like lug nuts on a wheel, go across from each other. Don't just go in a line. And as you tighten some up, other bolts will come loose. So you want to make sure you go back over all the bolts again. And you are done for the most part. Um, a couple of things we didn't talk about. At the base of the red or blue cap, you have the option to unscrew this whole assembly on the old valves. The new valves do not have this. So it's right here, this assembly underneath the blue cap would unscrew. That is the purpose of the bigger O-ring. If you have a bigger O-ring left over, don't worry. It's okay. The new valve assembly is all one piece and you will not run into that. And because we were rebuilding a new valve, we did not replace the flange gasket. Um, there's nothing wrong with the one that was on there. It's perfectly fine. As long as there's no um, dings or visible signs of wear, you should be good to go. Uh, it's sticky on one side. You pull it off like 3M tape. You take a putty knife or a razor blade or something and scrape off the old one and put this one right in its place. Again, pay attention to which side's flat and which side has an angle because it will work either way. But when you get it all built, you're gonna realize that you just put it together wrong. Um, and that is how you go through a Thompson Valve 2.